Absolutely, and and you know, in many respects, and I guess the the trick is to try and find a balance of building enough freedom into a program, and then enough possibility for you guys to take charge a little bit. And I think that works because you mentioned lift experience as, as one of the highlights. That works usually really well with the way we're having discussions when we have an external speaker. And sometimes they're not easy discussions, right? Mm -hmm. There's some grillings going on, mm -hmm. uh, but the server is so on, on, on really important topics. But it's the students who take charge of that. And I think that that's, that's really beautiful. And, and you probably get away with more difficult questions that, than, than, than I would or Helen would. Because you're the students and, and, and the speakers are very open to, 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 to that, I think. But it's, it's, it's working really well because of that, I think. Because the students are taking charge of those conversations. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think it, it feels very student-led as much as a, a master's programme can do. You're obviously not letting us just run free and be like, we're doing whatever we want. Um, but it feels very much like our voices are kind of like at the centre of this programme and that our interests kind of guide us through it, if that makes sense. Like it's, it doesn't feel prescriptive, which is good because arts and health shouldn't be a prescriptive thing. It should be very person-led and very person-centred. And I think the fact that the programme kind of incorporates that uh, really just, yeah, makes it kind of feel like it's been well thought through and it's kind of practically putting into place like the things that we're going to need to have when we graduate this mm -hmm. and to kind of ensure that we're then thinking about, okay, well, how can we use our practice to put our participants in the centre of our work rather than kind of coming in and enforcing something that we're interested in on the participants. So, yeah, I feel like, I feel like it was a good, good choice. Yeah. Well, and that, I think that criticality is really important because you know, this is a new way of working, although social prescribing, arts and health, nature-based approaches to health, community-based approaches have been out there for a long time. Bringing it together like that through new policies like social prescribing, like creative health, these are quite new ways of working and how to operationalise that, which is a horrible word, but how to make that happen better for all parties to make sure that participants and their wellbeing and health is at the heart of that and that we're addressing things like social injustice and inequalities I think that can only come from that criticality that you're talking about. So you guys, the future, you're taking the movement forward. And there isn't consensus, right? How this is going to work in practice. But I think the consensus is on the level of that we all in it for similar reasons, right? That we all want to advance uh, the health and well-being of the public in, 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 the, in the simplest sense and, and focusing on the non uh, clinical side of, of that journey because there's been so much emphasis and obviously so much funding and we hear it on the news on a daily basis about the NHS and the pressures and the, and the health services but there's so much that can be done to support health and well-being outside of those systems and I think that's that's really I guess thinking about all the students what everybody seems to be you know in agreement on that there is huge potential there but what we need to do is I guess identify the best ways of doing that and there's not a simple simple answer not a single answer and uh, therefore hopefully you you all can go forth in your own chosen directions and, and and make your own your own contribution to that after 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 you've left but so it's, it's interesting to hear what, where you want to go but um it's yeah i think that hopefully that's that's the start of that journey right i don't know if you have any any, any thoughts on that I, yeah i think it's definitely the start of of a journey um and i feel like it's it's given me the tools to kind of enable me to kind of go forward and feel a lot more confident in like how I would go about like setting up a research project or like how to kind of co-produce something with participants or, you know, how to critically look at my own work and be like, huh, that's not working. How can I kind of change this to like better suit the needs or the environment that I'm kind of going into? Um, and I feel like kind of before this course, I was very just kind of like, oh, it'll be fine. Like everything will kind of work out. And like, I don't really need to think about like the ethics of a project, like it'll be fine. Like we know that we're not going to go in and like hurt participants deliberately and all of this. Whereas now it feels very much like, I know that these things are needed and I know why they are needed. Um, and I feel like if I hadn't have done this course, I would probably be going about in the community, just doing work, not really thinking about like how it might impact on participants or like the ethics of it, or like how to kind of make it bespoke and adaptable and like, kind of linking in with all of these other networks around like social prescribing and kind of arts and health in general. Like I saw like it, I've kind of found a lot more research that I kind of hadn't really realized was out there before. And I think that is kind of due to the, like the assessments that we've been doing on the course and kind of having 
having to go out and seek specific research um, related to something that we're interested in. Um, so I feel like my knowledge has kind of really expanded um, as a result of kind of having the space to explore what I'm interested in.